my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast for this week. Today, our guest is Carmen Johnson, a motivational speaker and global health child health advocate. She's known for her entertaining, customized, and research-driven programs geared towards making healthy eating a whole lot easier for parents and their children. Carmen is going to answer every child's burning question, why? Why can't I have sugar? Why can't I have snacks for dinner? Why is everyone always fussing about my food choices? Why, why, why? We've all heard those questions from our kids. So trained through the SUNY accredited program at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition as a board certified health coach and having spent a decade in pharmaceutical sales teaching physicians, Carmen is bringing her talent for simplifying complicated scientific and nutritional information into an enjoyable and understandable format. It leaves her audience with a clearer understanding of how they can influence their own health with the food choices they're making. As a global child nutrition advocate who has taught thousands of parents and children alike, Carmen has followers all over the world, many of whom are probably listening right now, and the results of her teachings allow her audience to make better choices for themselves, their families, and begin true health. Anyone who listens to Carmen walks away inspired and motivated to start eating healthier, and that's what we would like our outcome to be today. So best of all, you'll all understand why. And we are going to talk about how to win the junk food battles with your kids without fussing, nagging, or fighting. As a parent myself, this is going to be a wonderful half an hour of learning. So welcome, Carmen. Thanks so much for having me. Carmen, tell us a little bit about how you got into nutrition. Well, that's kind of a funny story, and I love telling it because I was basically sitting in a hair chair one day getting extensions put in, and, um, you know, we all have things we want to change about ourselves, so I'm trying to have long, beautiful blonde hair, which never worked out, and um, this girl walks in with a flyer, and it's a mutual um, colleague of yours, uh, Dr. Dan Pompa, was actually doing a talk in Charlotte, where I lived, And she walked in with this flyer and said, you need to come hear this doctor. He cured his nephew of autism. And my ears perked up because one of my sweetest, dearest friends, her son had autism. And I just saw how debilitating it not only was for her son, but for her, she wasn't included in mommy play dates. Her son was, you know, sort of different from all the other children. It just wasn't a normal life for her. And in addition to that, um, One of my dear friends had had a double mastectomy, and my niece, who was 11 at the time, actually developed diabetes, and that's a whole long story about that, but I just sort of saw, like, disease all around me, and I was going, what on earth is going on? I have to go find out what's happening, and so that led me to go listen to Dr. Dan Pompa talk, and um, I used a lot of what I learned from him. I took that scientific heady information he was sharing with all the doctors. And I said, you know what? I can teach this to kids. Um, And so I parlayed what he was teaching and turned that into a kids program. And that's how I got into the schools. Wow. And that is a tricky thing to take this kind of complex scientific and nutritional information and make it easy for children. So what makes this different for children compared to what they might typically hear or or know about food. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, being a mother, you'll totally relate to this. But I think the big issue we have right now is there's so much nutrition education out there, and children have a ton of knowledge, but they don't have an understanding. Like when you say sugar is bad for you, children know and understand that sugar is bad for them. But the difference that I make in my teachings is that I show them inside the body how sugar acts actually affects them at the cellular level. So I get really creative and use these bouncy balls to represent human cells, and I walk children through a thought process. It's a very interactive session where I get them to think about every part of their body. And every and if you think about it as, you, as an adult, you think, I have eyes, I have brain cells, I have heart cells, lung cells, skin cells, you know, all of these cells in our body. And so I just pose the logical question after we run through that series and say, well, kids, if every single part of you is made up of trillions and trillions of tiny little cells, don't you think it's important what you feed those cells? And the light bulb goes off. They're like, yeah, yes. And that's just, that's part of the story. But the, the way I 
actually relate my information to the children and help them understand is I use bouncy balls. Like I mentioned, I use Play-Doh um, and I use um, some other, I have a demonstration buddy called Bob and I rip off his organs. So they actually start relating the fact that the food that they eat actually impacts very specific parts of their body. Um, and it's just really neat to see the children sort of come to life when they start to figure all this out. Well, that makes so much more sense to them um, than just the word good or the word bad. Yeah, well, I didn't share this part because I got so busy on the other thing, but I think you'll appreciate this is like as a doctor, you understand what insulin is and you know what a pancreas is. But to explain how diabetes happens to a, tw- a six-year-old, a 10-year-old, I actually show them that by eating too much sugar, it's like taking a big wad of Play-Doh. So I take the Play-Doh and I have the little bouncy ball and a water tube straw that you know, I say it's like a cell's receptor. It's looking for food. And I put that big wad of, bu- of Play-Doh on the end of the straw. And I say, well, if you eat too much sugar, then your cells can't get the nutrition they're looking for. So that visual alone really impacts the kids. They start to understand. I know mom said I shouldn't eat so much sugar, but that's what sugar is actually doing in my body. And then mm-hmm. this other um, thing that I made up myself, which I love, is... I consider insulin, I relate that to children as Pac-Man. And everybody knows Pac-Man, the little game Pac-Man. And so I just relate to them that insulin is like having lots of little Pac-Man in your body that have to go around working very hard to gobble up all that sugar they're putting in their bodies. And once they kind of put that visual in their head, and I say, if you have too much sugar, guess what? You get pancreatic poop out. Your pancreas just gets too tired, and that's when you can develop diabetes. And that's, you know, that little imagery for the children is so powerful. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've obviously talked to a lot of children and talked to a lot of parents. What are some of the most common food battles that you hear parents complaining about when they're talking about their kids? Sure. Um, You know, to date, actually, just to give you a personal milestone, I've talked to over 44,000 people through my videos and in-person presentations, and that's adults and children. And, you know, as a parent, the most common food fight is I'm a busy parent. My kids want to go through the drive through all the time, and we've stopped that. Um, You know, I just don't have time, or I did not in the past, have time to fight the food battles with them. And children are so addicted to sugar. They get sugar at school. They get candy for rewards in the classroom. Every other day is a cupcake birthday party for someone. It's just absolutely these kids are on sugar overload. So the biggest battle I see is that parents are, number one, their kids don't understand and why they're not supposed to have sugar. If they're thin and they feel like they're healthy, me, a mom or dad telling their kids sugar's bad for you doesn't make any sense, right? Because the kid's not sick. They don't get it. But when um, the science is explained to them, they actually start to understand that, yes, mommy and daddy are right. That is the problem. I am eating too much sugar. Um, And this is a little segue, but we go over and talk about the actual limits for kids because they don't know the limits. And I think... You know, we all have sweet twos. We all want junk food. It's the sugar and salt and all that's very addictive, and those are common battles that parents fight. But what happens is when children understand what's going on inside their bodies, they actually start making different choices. And so when we tell them that, you know, for a child, you know, like an elementary age child, their limit for sugar is, according to the American Heart Association, it should be about 16 grams of man sugar or added sugar per day. And when the kids bring out their Gatorades and their Twizzlers and their juice boxes and they look at all the sugars that they're consuming, they realize right then and there that they are on sugar overload. And then they connect the dots there with, oh, Miss Johnson just said too much sugar keeps my cells from getting the good nutrition. So that's kind of the one-two punch in helping the kids sort of overcome their common eating issues is they just need a little, they need, they need someone to bridge the gap between their knowledge and their understanding of healthy eating. So Carmen, let's talk a little bit about sugar limits for kids. You mentioned that a little bit earlier, 16 grams per day, but expand on that because I think that's something that probably most kids and most parents need to know. That's absolutely true. Um, I'm glad you brought that book back up for clarification. Um, the American Heart Association puts out guidelines every five years. And in 2010, I haven't seen the 2015 ones for some reason, but for, in 2010, the guidelines for 
consumption for children elementary age would be around 16 grams of added sugar per day. Now, that's not the sugar we find in fruits, bananas, apples, strawberries, fresh fruits. We're not talking sugars that occur naturally. We are talking about man-made sugars that have been added to boxed, bagged, and bottled things that children eat and consume. So, again, this is something that's really helpful for the children. They don't know their limits. They're just told you eat too much sugar, but when a child can actually count, and it's a great math exercise, when they can count how many grams of sugar are in one Hershey Kiss, okay, that's five. How many grams of sugar are in this um, Gatorade that I'm drinking? Wow, there's 24 or 48 grams of sugar. When children know that 16 grams of added sugar is their limit for the day to stay healthy, and then they start looking at how much sugar they're consuming, they automatically start regulating themselves. It's a beautiful thing Absolutely. to see. Absolutely. I've even seen some people um, put visual you know, sugar cubes there, um, and they have a pile of 24 sugar cubes, and say, would you feed yes. this to your kid? <laughs> and the parents are, of course, no, 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 we would never want to give them 24 sugar cubes. And then they put the bottle exactly. of you know, Gatorade or Pop or whatever it is beside it. And um, that's exactly what you're feeding your kid. Yeah, it's shocking. Like a pack of Skittles will have like 44 grams of sugar. A whole little sleeve of Starburst has like 33 grams of sugar. So, I mean, a kid can sit down and eat that in 10 minutes, right? And that's double their sugar intake for the entire day. That's that's why we have so much Absolutely. disease right now. And if we can curtail that by just giving the kids a little guardrail and a little number to look for, then and all the, the better. as well, because there is a, such oh, a lack of awareness even of... of what is an appropriate amount for kids to have because it is so prevalent out there today and you look at what other parents or other families might be doing as a bit of a guide and we're all kind of lost in what, what is really appropriate so that's a wonderful visual I think for people thanks so much for that absolutely so can you share with us some of the results you've seen right. you've done this program sure for years with, with, as you said, thousands of people. So what are some of the results that people would expect? Oh, my goodness. Um, Well, you know, every child is different, and so I can't guarantee one set of specific results for any parent. It's going to be, you know, we're all bio-individuals is a fun little word, and um, I can just only relate to you the things that I have seen happen. Um, You know, for instance, there was a, a, a Title I school that I went to teach in where this large girl was in the fifth grade and she was much bigger than me. She was probably 5'8", 170 pounds, a large fifth grader. And um, I just gave the one little cell talk like I do in the kids' videos that I'm offering. And I was only in her classroom for 30 minutes one day. And then I got enrolled to come back and teach a whole half a year in their school the very next year. And I was just curious if anyone remembered me. And so I asked the class, did anybody remember me? And that one girl stood up and she said, Miss Johnson, I do remember you coming and talking about sugars. And I changed my eating habits. And I said, well, why, why did you change your eating habits? She said, well, the kids were making fun of me because of how big I was. And I got my grandmother to go shop and she lost like 30 pounds over the course of the next year from just one little nutrition series. That was just one time meeting her. Um, I have little, little first graders that, you know, once they go through the, and see the videos, they'll tell their mom, a mom sent me back a note and said, you know, that her daughter loved the M&M yogurts. And she finally went back and just went through the kitchen cabinets and refrigerator after, seeing me in her class one day and she was regulating herself she was not eating the yogurt m&m she was not having the extra ice cream cones when she went out with her grandfather so what's happening is kids are regulating themselves which takes the pressure off the parents from having to be the bad guy and the heavy absolutely and you know i think sometimes we underestimate what kids are capable of understanding and you're proof that in putting these sorts of concepts in front of them in clear language, they will make a better decision for themselves. Oh, they do. There was a a teacher sent me this great little one. She said she had an ice cream social and they had just seen my video lesson in their classroom. And after that, you know, an hour or two later, they're having an ice cream social. And she sent me this cute little parody. It said, student one, what do you think is in a gummy worm? Anyway, a student two said, pure sugar. And then the next kid standing next to him said, no, sugar and food dye. 
eyes. And so the other, the first child spit the gummy worm out of her mouth and into the trash. And that was what one of her teachers sent me as the experience she saw after watching one little video series that I made for them. So that's amazing. it's, it's, it's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about your videos. You have some kids okay. nutrition videos that we're going to be able to share with our listeners. Absolutely. Um, these videos are for, you know, kindergarten. I made them intentionally for kindergarten through sixth grade. I've had 15 year girls watch them. I have parents watch them, but it is sort of very elementary kid centric in that I'm goofy and silly and, you know, things that little, little six and seven and eight year olds would think are funny. Uh, a 15 or 17 year old might roll their eyes at me, but it's still the concept is good. So I, you know, anybody can watch it. But I do really gear it towards the younger generation because the sooner we catch these kids and implement better eating habits for them, the better they're off they're going to be. So, again, ages, you know, 6 or 7 through 12, 13, 14 are a great audience for these videos. And, that you know, March is coming up, National Nutrition Month. March is National Nutrition Month. And so, um, in honor of that, I wanted to share with your audience and you guys – these free videos for your any parent, teacher, daycare provider that wants to access them and show their kids, um, they're more than welcome to do so. And hopefully we can help everyone win this battle that parents are facing trying to keep the junk food and sugars and sodas and candies out of their kids' hands and in the, out of their bodies. That's wonderful. And we're going to be creating a link for that. It will be at the bottom of the podcast email that we've sent out for those of you who have received that. And for those of you who have found us some other way, just pop over to our website, www.centerforepigeneticexpression.com and under Carmen Johnson's uh, segment will be the link. Awesome. So these are really a, a great tool for those people listening who might be teachers or have access to parent-teacher programs at school. Um, So is there a special video, or do they use the same one? Everyone will get the same link. These videos are actually housed on our website, which is thehealthykidsrevolution.com. They have a private access, which is the link that we'll send you guys. And, yeah, anybody can see it. A parent can show it. And and just to be warned, I do tell the children in the very beginning of the video video to like send their parents out of the room. And most kids do get up and say, mom, dad, leave the room. This is for us to watch. Um, So I would ask the parents to watch it on their own before showing it to their kids so that they know exactly what I explained. And then when they let their kids watch it, just leave the room and let the kids just kind of feel empowered. And they come back and they, they run, go tell their parents what they've learned mom, you won't believe this. I learned that. Or they just run right to the refrigerator in the pantry and start pulling out stuff that they like to eat and looking at the sugar content. So um, it's very powerful stuff. And I am really grateful for you guys sharing it. And, you know, the big goal is just to eradicate the disease that we have. And I know um, one of my, I'm a big fan of Dr. David Katz. And he had published the fact that, you know, our kids right now, are expected to have a shorter life expectancy than than you and I do. So um, that thought is just daunting. And my goal in life is to help as many people as I can, help as many kids as I can, to get better educated around why food matters. Absolutely. And and what a wonderful opportunity to to teach them to pay attention, um, to read those labels, to look for those things, and to understand that just because you're not heavier or you may be, you know, even a a skinny kid doesn't mean you're healthy. So that is an amazing message, I think, for this next generation to understand. Um, So if uh, anyone listening has heard this and thinks, oh, my goodness, my sister-in-law wasn't online today and she should really hear this or they want to share this with some friends, by all means, it is a free podcast. So send this link on to others. The more people who can hear about these opportunities and hear about these um, life-changing tools will be the better for, for the, the entire world as we have now gotten our podcast into 70 countries and over 35,000 people listening this week. Um, we hope that if this could make a difference for even 10% of those people, it's the beginning of changing the world for the better for the next generation. So again, you can find the podcast online 
at iTunes or on our website, www.centerforapigenetic.expression.com. This is your co-host, Dr. Wanda Lee McVie, and featuring today, Carmen Johnson. And uh, one more time, Carmen, can you just give them your website? Absolutely. It's www.thehealthykidsrevolution.com. And I just appreciate you guys uh, sharing all the information. You're doing a wonderful service for our nation and our world. And I'm just honored to be a part of your program. Thanks for joining us.